guys what's up welcome back to my channel and if you're new here welcome my name is Priya aka beauty and the books and you are here on my youtube channel where we do all things beauty and book based reviews hauls we also do a bit of vlogs and some lifestyle things too so if that tickles your fancy or you like the sound of it then before we get on with the video you know what to do Today's video is a book review of The Ballad of Songbirds and Snakes by Suzanne Collins and this is the latest book in the Hunger Games trilogy. This is a prequel to those three books. So this is set about 50 years before the first Hunger Games book. Now it focuses entirely on President Snow and his youth. So if you want to know what I thought about this then just keep on watching. So first off, like the original trilogy, this is a dystopian novel set in a faraway land future situation that's meant to be northern america so the point of view never strays from that of snow i would say his first name but i literally have no idea how to pronounce it and it's kind of like an internal monologue the whole time let's start off i don't know should we start off with the things that i liked yeah we'll go with those first to start it off on a positive note so i love this setting i love the sharp contrast from the capital in the Hunger Games and the capital in this book, it's just completely different. So this capital in the ballad is one that is still recovering from war, still kind of in somewhat of recession, some people are doing better than others, and they're trying to keep up appearances, whereas in the Hunger Games trilogy, it's full of decadence and it's just overflowing with extravagance. So that contrast is so interesting also really 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 enjoyed the nods to the original trilogy so with snow's roses and also the origin of the hanging tree song and various other aspects of katniss's life her name are all kind of picked up on in this novel and it's really quite nice to kind of connect the dots so i mentioned about the development of the capital from this prequel to the trilogy but i also love the development of the actual hunger games themselves so in this book they are on the 10th annual hunger games i think like the way that collins included snow in the upgrading and the development of the games and used his really clever and skillful attributes as a student to actually make this game 10 times more sadistic and the way that he picks it up i think could have gone into a little bit more depth about where he got these ideas from because of his like involvement in the games you can gradually see him become a villain and I like how she did that. I like that it wasn't just one turning point that when he was a kid, something bad happened to him and ever since then he's been evil. I like that it's these little tiny changes that even he himself can't notice that he is turning it into this other person. So I really love Lucy Gray and the Covey and the fun high spiritedness that they brought to the novel, to the setting, to the characters and just the overall story. But I have to say, she did great on me a little bit i just didn't i just didn't get her like i just didn't get her like need in the novel like i guess she was a love interest but that love interest really had no profound effect on the characters and apart from kind of being in the games i just really don't understand how relevant she was because a lot of i don't know i just she just didn't really need to be there and if so she could have been a bit like well written there wasn't that, many, that much depth to her either like like you could tell she had a lot going on as a person and an individual from what snow picked up on but we the reader didn't get an insight into that and i think that's where collins really missed the trick because it would have been a lot better for us to fall in love with lucy gray as the capital did when she was in the hunger games that would have been really good and i would have rooted for her a little bit more now following on from that going on to the things I didn't really like it didn't really seem like there was that much direction at the beginning yeah I agree there definitely was there was a set story it was the collaboration of students and tributes and trying to get them together and seeing what effect students could have on the Hunger Games and that's it then the Hunger Games happened and then they ended and then there is these so many chapters following about then Snow going into District 12. That aspect of the novel was just a little bit aimless. I just didn't really see the point, the intention or the thought behind it. The end was good and that made sense but the bit in the middle just 
lost me and I've seen a lot of reviews saying that the tone and the pace was a bit off and I have to disagree there because I really got through this quite easily up until the end of the games and then it just, it just really confused me after that. I just didn't know what was going on. And a lot of the key things that occur in the novel, like the end of the games and the aftermath of like Snow's actions and stuff, they all just happen really abruptly and they just come out of nowhere. So I think that area needs to be developed a little bit more because they're just kind of, you're chilling, you're, you know, reading along, pace is good, everything's good. All of a sudden, you just get whiplash by this plot twist, and it's like, come on now, it needs to make a little bit more sense than that. Even though I love Lucy Gray and I love Snow, their relationship and what stems from it was completely unnecessary. Unnecessary. It did nothing for the novel, nothing for the plot, and it just didn't need to happen. So, a little bit of a spoiler, so skip ahead like 10 seconds. Their relationship turned into a romance, which was incredibly predictable, may I add, but it just didn't need to happen. A lot of the other tributes and students got on incredibly well and cared for each other incredibly well without being romantically engaged. And I think, if anything, that would have been a lot more effective. That would have made them like more likeable for me because I just think their whole romance was just a bit like half-hearted. It's just wasn't for me and I'm one I love me a cliche cheesy romance but that was just it just wasn't right now also I think snow could have been written a lot better a lot better so him as a villain it's really smart really calculated really manipulative which is great I love those types of villains they're the best kinds but the way he was actually written was quite superficial and quite surface level there wasn't that much depth to him and even though it describes some hardships, it didn't dive deep enough in them for me to like feel for him, to associate with him, to feel like conflicted about him because he's the villain, I'm meant to hate him, but he's psychologically like this, but I'm meant to love him. So it didn't make me feel like that at all. I was just reading him like, okay, 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 cool. I just don't know. I just think it really just scratched the surface and there would have been so much more to talk about that would have made him a lot more three-dimensional and just more enjoyable to read as a villain. I think if she wasn't such an established author and this was the first book, then I would have kind of given her a bit of slack for it. I would have been like, oh, well, she did enough. Like, let's hope in the next book we get more in-depth into his psyche. So like I said earlier about certain aspects in the novel being quite abrupt and plot twists just coming out of nowhere, the ending happened as if she'd just run out of space and needed to fit every single word in. It just, it didn't need to be that short. So I'd say the maybe the last chapter was the ending all of a sudden a really key main character dies they're not given enough credit at all i think that was just quickly tidied up swept under the rug and yes it might be representative of the kind of the military and how they try and keep everything like hidden but it just it wasn't for me like i really like felt for that character more than I did for Snow and I just don't think their death was justified and if so I just think it should have been done better. And then also the ending on a whole just really just got me confused because all of a sudden it was really happy, really chill, you know they're gonna go off into the sunset and then it just switched just like that and you didn't really have any warning as to why or any more explanation. It just happened and I just, I really could have done with about 100 more pages just to really flesh out that ending and give me a little bit more of what I wanted. Generally I enjoyed the overall pace of the novel but that ending just came out of nowhere and it wasn't pleasant. Okay, so that is it for today's review guys. What did you think? It was a little bit more negative than I thought it was going to be, in all honesty. I, when I was reading it, I really enjoyed it. I kind of got through it, it was really easy. But now, thinking back on it, I realised the reason it was so easy was because there was just no depth. I just needed more, like I needed to look more into Snow's family life, Lucy Gray's family life, the plinths, just, just needed a little bit more to do with the characters and it's probably a little bit more of a plot driven novel than actually character driven. Um, so that's why I was a little bit mm, about it but it's still a good read, like the, no the story, the concept is good, it's just I had higher hopes I think. 
but anyway that is it for today's video guys i really hope you enjoyed it if you did don't forget to like subscribe comment you know all the good stuff down below and i will see you in the next one bye <laughs> Those cars are annoying. But we see I won't say I won't say it.